So this is the Insta360 GO 3. And this camera is awesome. So it looks like the brand new Insta360 is out. And there are a bunch of things I love about it, but one big thing that I hate about it, which means we definitely have to drip check it. <laughs> Now, before we get into today's drip check, I do have to say, one, this video is not sponsored, but if you do want to sponsor a video, there's a link down below. You could buy me a coffee. That would help out the channel a lot. But now, pimping, Insta360 didn't send me nothing. So I do not have the Insta360 Go 3. So again, this is not a full review, more just like, it's literally just a drip check. Insta360, holla at your boy. And now something else to note too is that, I'ma be real, I am not the biggest Insta360 Go series fan. I, I didn't like the first one. I bought the second one. Yeah, the, the Go 2 just was not for me. I, I didn't like it. I'm just keeping it real, I'm just keeping it real. But though, I think, I think this might change with the Go 3 because not for nothing, the Insta360 Go 3 looks surprisingly good. I sat down, I watched a ton of reviews. Like, it seems like everybody in the world has this camera. I mean, um, I mean, except for me. But yeah, I've watched a ton of reviews and overall, the camera looks good. Now, from what I can tell, if you do decide to buy the Insta360 Go 3, everything you need is right in the box. Boss. The Insta360 is a little bit bigger, but it's still tiny. It's waterproof, as well as the durability is still pretty good. And with this version, like each version, you are getting a bump up in image quality to 2.7K. And now, no, it's still not 4K, which is a little disappointing, but it's not the main thing that, that I just don't like about that. We'll save that. Filet. You're also getting a bump up in battery life from 30 minutes to 45 minutes. And then the Insta360 Go 3 also has an additional mic for better eye. On the Go 2, I believe they only had the mic on the top, but now you're having the mic in the top as well as in the front of the case. And then I think the biggest improvement had to be the case. And I'm not even gonna lie, the case, the the case is both. Because not only does it charge the camera like how the case did for the Go 2, but you actually getting a full touchscreen with the Go 3 case. And it's like legit a full on viewable screen, like a viewable touch screen. And the screen itself looks surprisingly good too. Like the screen looks good as well as the responsiveness of the screen. That was like the first thing I noticed. It looks buttery smooth. And the first thing I thought about when I saw like how clean the screen was, was like, come on, GoPro, GoPro. GoPro, there's no more excuses. You, Y'all gotta do better. Because the quality of GoPro's touch screens are like, like the responsiveness, all of that, it, it it's it's not good. <laughs> but yeah, my ninjas, I would have to say they did step it up with this case. And now if the case is backwards compatible with other, like with the older Go 2 camera, a pam, 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 that would be, that would be a huge plus too as well. And now something else I like about the case is that you can use it wirelessly, like a wireless remote or a wireless viewfinder. And I love that because this was this was actually something that I really wanted for the DJI Action 2. If the DJI Action 2 had this capability, it would it would have been game over. But yeah, it go the Go 3 got it. <laughs> and now something that they did take out of DJI's playbook though has to be that magnet game because they real they literally stole the way that you mount the camera from DJI. And Pippin, I ain't even hate. I think that was a great idea. Because <laughs> that whole magnet mount system that DJI came up with is genius. There's there's no point in reinventing the wheel. And now since this is a drip check and y'all know I'm a boss, we do have to talk about some cons that I've noticed from watching like a ton of review videos. We we gotta talk about these cons because they're not mentioned in every, like they're not mentioned everywhere, but they're mentioned like here and there. So I'm just grabbing everything that I noticed and I'm putting it into one. First thing I noticed is that there is no SD card slot in the case. And I think that, I think that was a, de that's a definitely a missed opportunity. And since they already stealing from DJI, they, they should have stole that idea too as well. Like they, y'all should have just did it. Next thing I noticed was the strange limitations on the using the screen. And, that, and what I mean by that is you get like these limitations of like, you can't play back time lapses or like other di different shots that you shot, which is a bit weird. To watch that footage back, you actually have to use your phone. And another strange limitation is you cannot shoot in like 2.7K all the time. And as well as 2.7K only goes up to, I believe 30 frames a second. So you are not getting the 60 frames a second or 50 frames a second like you would if you were shooting in 1440K. So you are getting a limitation on 2.7K when it comes to like frame rates. Okay. Time Cap Sky Money here, traveler through time and space. I realized when I was talking about the different modes and limitations, I think it was a bit confusing because 
they're not calling promo promo they're calling it free frame video and and then they have the easy mode which is just video mode and now not for nothing it is a bit confusing because you're not getting 2.7k in promo in the free frame mode you're only getting it in video mode and as for free frame mode you're only getting 1440 P. And in 1440p, you can shoot up to 50 frames per second, but then in the regular video mode, you can shoot at 2.7k, but only up to 30 frames per second, even though the free frame mode is technically the pro mode. So it, it's confusing. You're also getting a lag when it comes to stabilization. So as soon as you turn on stabilization in certain modes, yeah, you're, you're gonna get a lag. And then although the camera is durable, I don't think the case is that durable. Now, this is this is something that I need to look into more, but it doesn't seem like you would mount the case like outside of your car or on, on your helmet. It just doesn't seem that way. And it does not look like it could survive a fall, like at all. And I, hey man, I could be wrong about that, but I'm just saying that that's up. You know what, leave it in the comments. Let me know what you guys think. But that's just how it looks to me. Something else I noticed is that the video transmission from the case to the camera doesn't seem to, it, it doesn't have like a long range. Like it you also kind of seems like you might actually lose video transmission if the camera isn't facing the, the case or the case isn't facing the camera. That's what it looks like. So I, I could be wrong, but it either looks like the range is not that great or you have to have the two pointed towards each other. So if I'm holding the case and I turn around, it might lose video transmission. That's what it looks like. And then the last con would have to definitely be the price. Yo, yo, yo. So for the S360 Go 3, you have three different selections. You have a 32 gig, a 64 gig, and a 128 gig. The 32 gig alone is like 380. Then the 64 gig version is $400 on the dot. And then the 128 gig version is 430. But then the thing that I hate the most, like the one thing that just kind of like, that I think Insta360 should just stop doing all together when it comes to their action cameras. Making the action cameras where if you shoot in the pro mode, you have to process the footage. And I personally think this is a huge mistake. Like I think they need to stop doing that all together. I get the 360 cameras, I totally get that, but not action cameras. It just takes the user out of the whole experience when you have to do extra steps, especially considering how long it takes to process the footage. And now from what it looks like is they do offer like a user-friendly mode where you don't have to process the stabilization in the footage, but the pro mode, like the pro modes, like that's what kills it. To me, that's what kills it. Like if you have to take the footage and, and process it, like you have to do an extra step before you work with the footage, I think that that's a huge, that, that is a huge negative. So if I'm keeping it real, if I were to cop this camera, if I were to cop the Insta 360 Go 3, I would just go ahead and shoot in the regular user-friendly mode because I, I don't want to go through all that. <laughs> but anyway, Pimmin, those are my thoughts on the brand new Insta 360 Go 3. And overall, I have to say it does look like a solid camera. It looks great. So I got to give a huge shout out to Insta 360 for like taking it up a night. That is it, Pimpin. Hope you enjoyed this episode of Drip Check. If you did, like, comment, and subscribe. Don't forget, if you want to sponsor an episode of Drip Check or a vlog, there is a link down below to buy me a coffee because it helps out the channel a lot. Thanks again for watching, and let me know down below what do you guys think of the brand new S360 Go 3. Do you like it? Do you hate it? Would you be copying it anytime soon? Let me know down below. But anyway, Pimpin, that is it, and I will see you in the next one. <laughs> Hold on, we got a, there's a baby crying. <laughs> and from what it looks like, it looks like, ah, uh, dang it, come on, man. <laughs> Just trying to get this one line out. <laughs> Whoa, that bird is loud. <laughs> what are you doing up there, man? <laughs> <A> loud bird. <laughs>